All right, so what we're gonna be showing here is a really weird problem that we had with a contactor that was intermittently tripping a breaker. And I know you're gonna say that's not what was causing it. And we would have agreed, but eventually we sourced the problem to the contactor and we're gonna show you how hard this thing was to diagnose. And then we're gonna try to pull it apart and see if we can figure out what the heck's actually going on inside this thing. It's gonna be exciting. And I've got Eric here with me. All right, so Eric is gonna demonstrate. We're gonna start with the field piece and we're going to just leave it in mega ohm scale. And we've got the screws a little bit backed out because that's how it was when we uninstalled it. So when we first checked it, we were like, no, it's not shorted. But then we tighten the screws down like they would be when the system was in operation. And remember, this was an intermittent problem. So we'd show up, breaker be tripped, we'd reset the breaker and we really couldn't figure out what was going on. Still, still, we're not showing anything. Previously, when we tightened it down, we actually did, but we're not. The thing to consider here is when you're using a, a typical multimeter, it's using pretty low voltage in order to travel in between um, to actually make the path. And this is why, in some cases, you won't find a short circuit with a regular meter um, on, say, a compressor or motors or switch gear. And now we're going to use the Fluke 1587. Uh, we'll start as an installation test mode right now. Is that where you want to start? Yeah, let's, that's fine. We'll start there. We'll, we'll start with 50 volts. So we're gonna change the range to 50 volts and now we're gonna do installation test and see what we get. And we're reading 55 mega ohms, which if you do the math on that, really shouldn't be enough to even really show up. I mean, the current that would be uh, present over 55 mega ohms. I don't wanna do the math, it's not very much. Do you know that, do you know that math off the top of your head, Alan? No. 55, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a lot. So now we're gonna switch it to, what are you gonna to go to, 500? Well, 500, because um, the peak of 240, because 240 is the average, would be around 500 volts. So this is would be your peak of your wet sine waves, right? You can, you can hear, hear it. it. Yeah, you can hear the thing arcing in there. And so it started off, and now it's now it's after the arc happened, then the mega ohms went up a little higher. Let's, let's take it up to 1,000 volts. Watch your eyes. You can really hear it. Yeah, you can hear it now. <laughs> I can see it, yeah. You can see the arc? Yeah. Where's it happening at? Okay. Next to the contact on the right. Super strange. So now we're gonna try to pull this sucker apart and see why that's happening. Now again, remember, this this isn't just theoretical. This represents a real fault in the field. Take the top end off first. I'm having Eric do this for me because I don't know how to actually use tools in real life. We have to get a real technician to pull the contactor apart. I'm well, interested to see how the heck, especially, I mean, I'm really <laughs> Maybe, you know, you might be onto something there. There are like a little, we saw a little it. tab that holds these um, in that I have to depress with the screwdriver. We did clean up this area with contact cleaner before uh, because there's that um, carbon tracing that I've heard of before. And I don't know exactly why that happens. Are you familiar with carbon tracing, Alan? Have you ever heard that before? Well, well every time the contacts make and, you know, they arc and pieces of it are going everywhere, but I don't know, I might just have to bend this out of the way because I can't get the tab to depress. Where were we see? We were actually seeing it right there underneath that contact, right? Is this where you were seeing it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, was, uh, I, it, it looks like I can see it on the video too. Hopefully. Let's see if we can pull out the bar. Flash. Such a pain. <laughs> yeah, it's got these tabs right here and I couldn't, it's just a one-time deal. Do you have pliers in here? Absolutely. On the, on the left side, outside, we've got not just any pliers. Oh yeah, the Nipex best. pliers. These pliers smell funny. Let's see. Yeah, I think the bar's got a couple tabs that do it too, so I'm trying to not destroy the contactor as it comes no, apart, but it's all right. Well, we might destroy. Okay, there we go. So we got the bar out. Yeah, I don't see anywhere it could have been touching. I mean, it would have had to been this, this, or this. Yeah, well, we, we would see it too here, I mean, because the thing was clearly arcing, uh, and it's not. It's, there's nothing on this side, because it was only showing a short between these sides with the contacts open. So, I mean, I think it was literally just... It had to be it, it actually carbon. through that carbon, yeah. That is weird. Because you also think of carbon as being an insulator. I mean, maybe it's just dirt, I mean, I can't. Well, it makes sense with it, with it requiring higher voltages, actually. Yeah. See the short. Mm-hmm. But it does illustrate. Interesting, even with it being cleaned up, I mean, I, I don't see a heavy buildup here that would, yeah. I, that I would think would conduct electricity. Spontaneous strong disassembly. Boy. Strong, strong young pup we got. I here. don't know my own strength. Yeah, that's very, very interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I think so. I mean, if anything, it indicates that the higher the voltage, the more 
necessity there is to actually keep your contacts clean. The higher the current that is switching. Right, the more likely you're gonna have. I can't remember even seeing it on a 480 contactor. Yeah, I know, uh, just give give quick credit to Gary McCready, because I know he did a video on this over at HVAC Know It All, and he talked about this carbon, I think he called it carbon tracing, and it's just the first time I've ever seen it. I mean, this is a residential unit, this is just 240 volts. And I think there may be a combo problem, I mean, because um, there was actually some, one of the techs observed that the compressor wasn't starting at one point, so I think maybe the compressor drawing consistent um, high start amps um, could have resulted in more uh, contact loss, you know, as the thing is making and breaking, you have those big arcs. Because again, I mean, you know, some of that can be metallic material too, I would imagine. We got everything removed. Give her all she's got, Scotty. Yeah, look at there. Two giga ohms, so that's like crazy high resistance. Giga? I didn't know this thing read in giga ohms. Have you ever heard that before? I didn't even know. It doesn't even sound like a real thing, it does doesn't. it? <laughs> I think you just made that up. No, it actually says it there. Giga ohms. What I learned here is that there legitimately are, I mean, we know this, that there are legitimately cases for mega ohmmeters and other parts of our industry, insulation tester. But in regular air conditioning, there's never been a case where I felt like I absolutely needed it to diagnose a problem. But in this case, I don't know. It's nice to have, and I have this one because it's not just a mega meter, it's a combination. You know, I can do. I use the milliamps more than anything else on this meter. You know, you have millivolts, which I've not really had to mess with, and you have your insulation testing when you need it, so. There's our diagnosis. We have some path just through those, even after cleaning it, even after I use contact cleaner on, because I was just thinking, all right, well, maybe it's bridging through here. And so I put contact cleaner, wiped it all down. I didn't get a brush and get real aggressive, but it's yeah. a real thing. Yeah, that's really cool. All right, cool.